like So, right now, I'm either filming on the Sony FX30 or the Lumix S52X. And today, I'm gonna tell you which one I ended up buying and why. And maybe we'll have some fun and learn something along the way. There's no way to know until you watch the video. All right, Andrew, give us like a 10 second synopsis on what's, what's going on this weekend right now. 10 second synopsis in Danville, Illinois at my wife's mother's house on a beautiful lake we're about to go explore Danville with our good friend Jesse Friday and YouTube extraordinaire Max Zayfield. And cue the drone footage. We don't have any because we crashed it. I brought my drone and I got some super sick jet ski footage and then I crashed my drone into the lake and it's dead and gone forever so I have to buy a new drone. Okay, time to make a movie. So quick context for you guys. I have been shooting with the Sony a7S III for about three years now and I still love it but I've been on the hunt for a B-cam and the top two contenders to me have been the FX30 and the Lumix S52X. When you're looking to buy a B camera, I think that you should start by writing down a list of needs for what you do. So why don't we start with me telling you my needs in a camera? All right, boys. Why did that take? <laughs> okay, so the first thing is it has to color match my A camera decently well. It doesn't have to be perfect. I can manipulate it in DaVinci Resolve quite a bit, but it has to be relatively close to my A camera. Second thing, it can have absolutely zero overheating issues. I do a ton of long takes for what I shoot with YouTube and my client stuff, and I do a lot of outdoor shooting as well, so no risk of overheating which is why the Sony ZV-E1 is not even an option. The camera needs to be small and lightweight because I do a ton of different gimbal shots and I don't want it to weigh me down too much. It also has to have reliable autofocus because I do a lot of hands-off style shooting where I'm setting the camera up as a B camera. I gotta be able to just touch focus and trust it for long takes. So I don't want something that's wonky. The last two things, it has to be easy to set up with live streaming stuff because I'm doing a lot more live streaming with the client stuff and some personal live streaming as well. And it's gotta be affordable. That's my main needs. And now we're gonna discuss how each of these cameras addresses each of my needs. First topic is color matching. Color matching is where you would think the Sony would be the obvious winner, but I've used both in conjunction with my a7S III in a controlled lighting scenario, and actually they're both really, really close. You'd be surprised, like V-Log on the Lumix S52X, for some reason for me, I was able to apply like the same grade to my a7S III and the Lumix, and they turned out almost the exact same. I just had to change a couple little settings. But I gotta give the edge to the Sony just because it's the same company, making the same brand of sensors and color profiles and color science and all that kind of stuff. So it's close, but I'm gonna give it to the FX30 for this one. Now, what about overheating, you know? It can be kind of a touchy subject, but honestly, both cameras do a really good job because they both have internal fans. Neither one of them have a record limit. So I've used both of them in outdoor situations and long form shooting and neither of them have overheated for me. My a7S III hasn't overheated either. So it's a tie on the overheating front. Now let's talk about the bodies of these two cameras. You gotta feel comfortable when you're holding your camera. You gotta enjoy shooting with your camera because it's gonna be more fun for you to pick it up and actually go out and shoot with it. The S52X looks really cool. It's all blacked out. It has a viewfinder, which the FX30 doesn't have, but the actual feel of the body is what I'm after. And I, just from shooting with both of the cameras, I prefer the FX30. I like the hand grip. I like the shape of the body. And I like that they've moved away from the photo style body that the Lumix has and the other Sony and Canon cameras have. The, the FX30 and the FX3 feel more like a video camera. They look more like a video camera in my opinion. And you know, I love my a7S III, but after testing the FX30 and the Lumix, I'm like, I gotta give it to the it just feels cozy to me. I know some people don't like Sony bodies, but they can get fricked, you know? They can get fricked. 
All right, I don't actually want anybody to get fricked because that's just straight up rude. But more important than the body itself is reliable autofocus. And I know this can be a touchy subject because not everybody needs autofocus. I don't use autofocus all the time, but for the kind of work that I do, I do have to rely on it quite a bit, especially when I'm trying to use two cameras as one guy. Now, I still stand by my original comment that I made about the Lumix S5 2X's autofocus system from my review. I would be confident using the autofocus from this Lumix camera. But I have used it in real world work situations. And during one of my shoots in a controlled lighting environment, there were times where the camera would just miss for a couple seconds. And it wasn't anything crazy, but in the edit, it definitely was a frustration. Sony's system isn't perfect either. There are times where it misses focus and it's annoying, but I have experienced it to be a little bit more reliable overall than the Lumix setup, so I gotta give it to the FX30 for autofocus. It's starting to rain. It like started to rain on me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Get in, target. Okay, I think it's pretty obvious that these cameras were both designed with video shooting as the main priority. Now there is a little hack you can do to upgrade the photo capabilities of both of these cameras or the camera you already have, and that's Luminar Neo. Let's look at some FX30 and S52X photos while we talk about Luminar. For example, here is a raw photo from the FX30's 26 megapixel sensor, and here's the Luminar edit. And here's a raw photo from the S52X's 24 megapixel sensor, and here's the Luminar edit. This software is powered by AI, so it analyzes your spicy little pickies and suggests edits for you. Pretty crazy. This is perfect for me because I'm not the best photo editor and I need things done super quick, but even if you are a professional grade photographer, you can use this software completely manually like any other one, but still benefit from the insane speeds and the clean interface. My favorite features are the sky replacement tool, the super easy skin retouching, and the fact that I'm no longer gonna be paying a subscription to an app that rhymes with flight broom. I told you guys I promote stuff that I actually use in my work, and the Luminar Neo team are now part of the Mayfam. If you want to speed up your workflow, up your game, and save money, you can get 10% off with code ZACKATTACK and check out some Luminar Neo Pro, some annual subscriptions, all that good stuff. Links in the description, baby. Let's get to it. Now, what about live streaming? Well, let's cut to a conversation I had with Connor about that. Technically, your camera has like high, high end live streaming functions. Yeah via like ethernet and all this crazy stuff where you can put a ton of those together on one like server or whatever. Mm -hmm. This, it's more simplified, but I can just take a Gen 3 USB-C cable straight into my computer and use this as a webcam for FaceTime, OBS for like gaming, live streaming on YouTube, whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's so convenient and it charges the camera. It's so nice, like capture cards are done for me. I think that's coming to this camera. I mean, don't quote me on it, but I think it's coming to the uh, S52X in an update. They just haven't done it yet. Yeah, I feel like that's something they could add because it already has like incredible streaming features, just not that simple one. Yeah. All right, I don't do this very often, but let's get down to the nitty gritty. Let's talk about affordability with these two cameras. So the S52X, 2200 bucks. The FX30, 1800 bucks. It's cheaper. Now, there are some interesting facts that have to relate to the price. We gotta talk about it really quick. Specs are kinda dumb, but you just gotta know what's going on. With the S52X, you got a full frame sensor. You can shoot open gate, which is kinda cool. I wouldn't probably use it that much, but it's cool. It does 4K60, but with a decent crop, which is a big bugaboo for me personally. Shoots ProRes internal, which is cool. Dual native ISO, which is awesome. And it's got some of the best image stabilization in a mirrorless camera. FX30, 1800 bucks. Does 4K up to 120. 4K, 24, and 60, no crop. 120 has a crop, but it's still nice to be able to use it. The biggest difference between these two cameras is the FX30 has an APS-C size sensor. The S52X has a full frame sensor. I personally don't give a freaking rip sauce about any of that stuff. And I know that's pretty offensive to a lot of people, but you guys are just gonna have to get through it because it's really not that big a deal. You don't even know what size sensor I'm shooting on right now. What is it? Is it APS-C, is it full frame? Which camera is this? Does it matter? No. And the FX30 also has dual native ISO. The low light performance is probably better on the Lumix. So with the prices and the features kind of listed next to each other, they're pretty close contenders. Each one's gonna have its pros and cons, but it is time for me to reveal which one I've chosen and why. All right, in the camera, 
I have purchased between the Lumix S52X and the Sony FX30 is, hold on one second, I gotta show you with my phone technology. All right, here we go. Three, two, one, boom, baby. It's the Sony FX30. I'm rocking a little road mic and the Sigma 16mm f1.4. I can't tell you guys how close I was to jumping back into Lumix cameras with the S52X, but ultimately, for $1,800, the amount of stuff you're getting crammed into this little FX30 is unbeatable in my opinion. I think it's like the ultimate content creator camera. It's sick. So it's important to celebrate victories in life, and there's only one way to celebrate the FX30 in my eyes. This is how we celebrate choosing the FX30 over the Lumix S52X, ladies and gentlemen. This is for the FX3. Oh! oh my god! This is all AI generated. So is this. Oh my. I'm trying to film a video here. Get the hell out of my office.